Hi, I'm Mr. Simons. Here we are again talking about the economic issue of environmental sustainability. In this video, we're going to continue along with market failure. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw some graphs to demonstrate market failure. So if I think about this idea of market failure, that there are two types of graphs that we need to be able to draw. One is that of a negative externality, uh, a negative unintended consequence of production. And the other is where something good happens, something good that maybe we didn't expect, but it's still pretty welcome. And that is a positive externality. Okay, ta-da, here is a graph ready to draw. What we're gonna start with is market failure. So this is the negative externalities example. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start by drawing our demand curve. And then what we'll do is we'll just, I don't know, mix it up and draw our supply curve. So this should be pretty familiar. Now, if we think about the environment and about externalities and market failure and all the things that we're doing, that if we're thinking about demand, demand is all about, you know, the benefit that consumers get. That's why they pay the money, because they get benefit. So we call this, this is the price that happens, the market price, and that's the market quantity, okay? So if I talk about M, the equilibrium from the price mechanism. So what we're saying though, is that this supply curve represents a particular form of supply. The private costs of firms, right? What I would like you to think about is that this is, this is not including the environmental impact. It's just strictly what it costs them to produce. So now we're starting to think, well, what would happen if we put in what it costs to produce? So what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna try and draw this as straight as possible. Okay, it's not terrible. So what we can say here that this S here, this new curve, is not the private cost, but in effect that this is going to be the social cost. So if we think about the social cost, what does that mean? <laughs> Including environmental damage. So we've got private cost, just what it costs to produce. Social cost, including environmental damage. So if I then think about where the new equilibrium is, so we go, so that can be A, and then this is gonna be our new equilibrium of B, I get different things, right? So what I get is I get P, S, and Q, S. So what happens is that the price goes up, up and the quantity goes down. So when I think about PS or QS, let's put it up here. So I got PS or QS, that what this is saying is that this is the, that this is the socially optimal level, that actually consumers have to pay more money because they have to pay to take care of the effects of the environment. And actually, companies should make less because they're not taking into account what it costs to ruin the environment when they are producing. So again, what we're saying here is that in our markets at the moment, we produce where demand is equal to private cost. But really, if we are trying to take into account the full cost of production, we should be producing where demand is equal to the social cost, and that is at a higher price and a lower quantity. Remember, just before we move on, that this situation is for negative externalities. Okay, let's flip up the situation. Here we've got 
market failure, and a positive externality. So let's start by labeling our curve. So here I've got supply, right? So this supply here, um, looking at producers, and here we've got demand. Now, in this first instance, so let's call this A, if we are setting up this equilibrium, that this is going to be PM and QM, and that this demand is going to be PM, QM, that that's all about so this is just what happens when the, when the price mechanism operates. So what we're saying though, is that with a positive externality, what we're saying is society gains from one person's actions. So even though our friend here gets this much private benefit, that actually in society, we get a whole lot more. Our demand in terms of the benefit that society gets, well, it's much, much larger. So what it means is that because society gets so much benefit, actually, people should be charging a higher price. And also, well, if society gets so much benefit, they should be producing more. So price should be higher, production should go up, and that society would get the benefit of this positive externality. So again, if we're distinguishing, this is the market here, but if I look at PS and QS, if you remember from the previous graph that this is all about where price and quantity is at its social, sorry, socially optimal level because that we get all of these extra benefits for society. So this is all a little bit tricky, I know. In this video, we've looked at how we draw a negative and a positive externality. Now, there are a lot more videos up there on this YouTube channel, some about the environment, some about other things, I encourage you to subscribe so you can see the latest videos as they come in and you can find out some more information that might help build up your knowledge of economics. Thanks for watching.